Well, it's time to head in and talk about some Gru's news. I just stopped at the Twisty Treat for an extremely lopsided cherry dipped ice cream cone. You guys like the cherry dip or you gals like the cherry dip? I know chocolate's the classic. They do what, butterscotch as well. I don't know, growing up, we had Dairy Queen up in Ohio where I'm from and man, I love the cherry dip. I'm gonna get into this ice cream cone. You're gonna get in the Cruise news. Let's get out of here. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. And what a day it is. As of right now, we're less than 40 subscribers away from a huge milestone, 10,000 subscribers. Imagine that. We're closing in on enough members of this channel to more than fill an entire Oasis class cruise ship, the largest ships ever built. And it's unbelievable to me. I really got a little emotional this morning just thinking about it. So if you haven't already, please do me a huge favor and become a subscriber to this channel today. Now let's get things started with our question of the day. And today's question, when you cruise, do you buy the drinks package on board? Let me know your answer down in the comments section below this video. And hey, don't forget that lonely little thumbs up button that's just down there waiting for you to tap on it. Just boom, 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 just like that, it's easy. And one more thing before we get started in the cruise news today, it's Mother's Day and I would just like to take a quick second to wish all of the moms out there in the Midships family a happy Mother's Day to you. And to my own mama, Mama Midships, happy Mother's Day to you as well. Now, today we're gonna talk about Carnival being accused of mishandling a large COVID spread on board one of their ships. We'll also talk about barnacles and no, not Washington DC politicians. Dad joke number one accomplished. Oh yeah, but really we're talking about barnacles and it's not as lame as it might sound. So you might want to stick around. Also Royal Caribbean, they're looking to put the brakes on the Chinese cruise market until 2024 maybe. But let's begin with this story about Carnival Cruise Line being accused of mishandling what's being called a COVID outbreak aboard their ship, the Carnival Spirit. So for a story like this, I think it's important we kind of set the whole thing up from the beginning. So let's rewind back to Miami, Florida on April 17th. Passengers boarded the Carnival Spirit bound for Alaska. They're taking a long cruise, two weeks to be precise. Fast forward to May the 3rd and the Spirit arrived in Seattle. And there's a lot of COVID cases on board. Enough, in fact, to trigger a CDC investigation of the Carnival Spirit to find out just what happened to cause so many cases to happen all at once on this ship. Now for Carnival's part, they put out a statement saying that their health and safety protocols exceed those set by the CDC. And they said they're closely following them and including the ship had a full vaccine requirement. Everybody sailing on it had to be vaccinated. They also pre-cruise tested all of their guests and the crew on board the ship was fully vaccinated and Carnival says they wore masks the whole time. Carnival went on to say their protocols were designed to be flexible as needed and additional measures were implemented during this particular cruise because of all the COVID that happened on board. Now, as you know, there's two sides to every story. We just heard Carnival's. Now it's time to hear from some of the people who feel like Carnival did them a little bit dirty. Some passengers who were on board the Spirit, they alleged that the crew on the ship was just woefully mishandling the situation. A passenger by the name of Darren from Las Vegas told CNN, for instance, that he boarded the ship in Miami and was informed on April 26th, there was a COVID outbreak on board. The passenger went on to test positive and said the cruise line promised they'd move him to an isolation cabin, but he ended up having to stay in his original cabin the whole time with his traveling roommate who presumably didn't test positive at that point. The article doesn't make any mention of that. However, the passenger did allege that when he tried to reach out to the medical center on board the ship, they had closed early and gone home for the night. So apparently they went on to call guest services and try to get moved, but guest services told them they were just out of isolation cabins completely on board this cruise ship and they'd have to stay in their own room, despite one of them being positive and one being negative. Other guests on board complained that it took a long time to get essential things delivered to their quarantine cabins, like food or drinks, for instance, with one passenger called Walter alleging that they ordered food at 1 p.m. only to not receive it until 7 p.m. Now, I've been reading lots of articles about this from all kinds of sources, trying to piece together where the story is actually true and where it might be a little bit embellished 
or sensationalized by news outlets to get clicks and views. We all know, Lord knows these news outlets, they just love to tick me off and just write some things that they don't need to be writing, especially about coronaviruses on cruise ships. I don't know how they can sensationalize stories like they do about coronavirus on cruise ships, but they seem to do so. Now, several of these stories that have been put out about this situation include quotes from people who were on board the ships complaining that once they got off the ship, the cruise line shuttled them to the airport for their flight home. And at that point, no one came around or called them to monitor their activities to see what they were doing once they got off the ship and were shuttled to the airport to make sure they weren't spreading COVID. And it's like, if you know you're positive, isn't it kind of your job too to make sure you're not spreading COVID? I don't know. I have a hard time with things like that. Like, don't these people remember that old social media posting from early in the pandemic that said, stay home if you sick, come over if you thick, thick with two C's? You remember what I'm talking about. Now, perhaps one of the most important things to remember when we hear stories like this is everyone on board this ship was fully vaccinated, crew and guests alike. And we haven't heard any stories of people who had major problems with their coronavirus symptoms emerging out of this ship. All I was able to find is that some people felt marginally unwell, but it sounds like the majority of everybody that had cases were very mild or completely asymptomatic altogether, which is still really unfortunate because nobody wants to have their crews ruined by COVID. You wait all this time since you booked it, you get excited, you probably ran out and bought some new clothes or outfits, all kinds of stuff, some new swag to take with you on your cruise. We'll talk about that in a minute, don't worry. And you get on the cruise and lo and behold, you end up stuck in your cabin quarantining. That's not fun, and I sympathize with the people who did catch COVID on this or any other cruise. I know in the past, before the pandemic, I've had days that I just didn't feel great on a cruise ship, and I stayed in my cabin because that's the responsible thing to do. If you're not feeling well in a social situation that is tight quarters, stay home. Just literally stay home. I'm not sure why we're still hearing these kind of stories, but again, if anything comes out from this news from the Carnival Spirit, outbreak, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you're amongst the first to know of any updates. And perhaps in poorly timed news from Carnival, they just updated their website on May 4th, Star Wars Day, to reflect new testing requirements for passengers boarding their ships who are not only fully vaccinated, but additionally they're up to date with their booster. Remember, I said up to date with their booster for this because it only applies to those who are up to date. If you're in that particular category, Carnival's website now says, except when a destination requirement says otherwise, if you're fully up to date and boosted, your pre-embarkation testing is now extended to a three day window instead of the traditional two day. The website goes on to say, if you're fully vaxxed, but not up to date on your booster shots and you're eligible to get one, you still have to comply with the two day testing window that we've seen for the last six or eight months now. So make sure you check out the cruise line's health and safety protocols before you cruise. It's a just good policy. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts and opinions about this whole debacle that went down with the carnival spirit. If you have some insight or maybe you were on board the ship, go ahead and leave a comment on this video. Reach out to me on any of my social media like Facebook at Midships or Instagram at Midships Cruise. Yeah, right here, pretty easy to find me. Now, before we get into our next story, I need to remind you that it tends to cost me a lot of money to take cruises and bring you content from them, posting on social media, bring it here to YouTube. And one fantastic way you can help keep me cruising and it won't cost you an extra dime is by purchasing your cruise essentials from my Amazon affiliate store. The best part is if you look at my store right now and you went off and made another purchase like baby formula or a shower head or a kitchen sink, anything else that you buy on Amazon within the 48 hours after looking at my affiliate store, I still earn a small commission on and you don't pay anything more. So it helps my channel immensely. And you can do so by following the link in the description below or this one up here if you're on mobile. Now, no more ads until the end when I tell you about my group cruise that I'd love for you to join me on. But for now, we need to talk about barnacles. Oh, barnacles. So this story involves Celebrity Cruise Line and their ship, the Eclipse. They're canceling a cruise because of barnacles, of all things. Have you ever heard of something like this happen? Let me tell you this story. The May 22nd Alaska sailing from Vancouver for Celebrity Eclipse is being fully canceled and another cruise for this ship on the 15th is actually 
having ports changed due to barnacles growing all over the bottom of the ship. And apparently these barnacles are slowing the ship down considerably, which means it's not able to actually reach its top speeds anymore and can't even make certain ports of calls. And beyond the slower top speed, there's also environmental concerns. You don't want to introduce marine life that isn't native to an area by bringing it along on the bottom of your cruise ship, if you can avoid it. And apparently, according to the website Cruise Hive, it's a really delicate process to clean these barnacles off the bottom of these cruise ships. And they have to do it really carefully so they don't damage the hull. There's like special paint and special coatings down there on these vessels to help them be more efficient and slippery in the water. And you have to be careful of the environment. You don't want to be knocking off invasive species and just leaving them in some random body of water that they're not native to. So there you have it. May the 8th, the day that barnacles canceled a cruise. Right, you know where this is going, right? I'm taking all of you with me on my group cruise. We're leaving October 24th of this year from Charleston, South Carolina, aboard Carnival Sunshine. I got tons of things planned, but perhaps the coolest thing of all is that I'm filming a brand new intro for this channel, the Midships channel, and any of you who go with me on the group cruise, you're gonna be part of this intro, if you wanna be. If you're camera shy, you don't have to be, but it's your chance to see yourself on TV, right in this box you're watching right now, every time you sit down to watch a Midships episode. If you'd like more information on how you can get on board and participate, I'd invite you to join the group's Facebook page. There's a link in the description below. Here you go, I pin one like always. Now, I gotta run. We've had way too much fun here on today's episode talking about barnacles. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. And until tomorrow, we'll see ya on the midships. And don't let the barnacles get you down, okay? I wonder how those things taste. They look really gross. Blah. Barnacles. See you tomorrow.